Okay, we're now recording. Okay, so let me get set up. While I'm getting set up, we're basically done with the course. So I'm gonna do some more stuff from 5.5, five, but I'm even gonna start going back and reviewing some other problems that some people had. So in other words, it's almost like I'm not waiting for you to ask questions on Wednesday. I'm starting to get a jump on some of that. Okay, then when I think I've had enough, maybe around 9.30ish, I'll stop and give you the quiz, okay, which hopefully is pretty straightforward. So as usual, I'll put you in your breakout rooms. Um, persona will float from room to room. I'll mostly be in the main room, although I'll sneak in from time to time also. Okay, so I'll lecture for a while, quote unquote, <clears throat> and then I'll give you the quiz. So game plan is Monday, I was going to review exams one and two, Tuesday, three and four. Okay, and if there's leftover time, I'll let you ask questions. Wednesday, dedicated for questions and answers. Thursday is our last regular ex exam. And then Friday, give you back uh, a review. So I won't make a new video for the exam five because that's what Friday the 21st is. We'll do that. And I'm not promising you that I'll grade all your exams by that very Friday, but I should have them by the weekend. Okay, and then you know what to study for the final exam. Okay, final exam, uh, just study the old exams. Most likely scenarios, I'll pick, say, three problems, four problems from each test. Three times five is 15. Four times five is 20. Okay, so I'll pick, let's let's say I pick three problems as an example. Then I'll pick three problems from each test and use that to construct a final exam. You may have five formula sheets for the final exam. Okay, if you already have the cheat sheet from the first test, second test, third test, fourth test, and fifth test you're still working on, just bring them all. That's perfectly fine. Just bring the whole works. And if you want to add to them, you're allowed to add to them too. Okay. So any quick questions about that? Uh, let's see. Anybody that just joined? Yeah, if you came late, put your name in the chat. I got you. Okay. So I'll lecture for a while and then we'll give you the quiz and then we're done. Okay. I'm not necessarily doing only 5.5, five, so I'm jumping back and forth. Okay. So 5.527. <clears throat> okay. The integral of x squared plus one times x cubed plus three x to the fourth power dx. Okay, now you should know the way it works. The derivative of third degree is second degree. So that pretty much tells you how to set it up. Let u be this, let u be x cubed plus three x. And then what is the derivative? So it's like, ignore this now. What's the derivative of x cubed plus three x? Three x squared plus three dx. Okay, but look at what I have, x squared plus one. This is 3x squared plus 3. Yeah, but if I factor out the 3, right, this is 3 times x squared plus 1 dx. So that tells me to multiply by 3 inside and 1 third outside. Okay, so the next step, this is going to be a 1 third. This is u to the fourth. Then 3x squared plus 1 dx, 3x squared plus 1 dx, that's my du. Okay, so 1 third integral of u to the fourth du. Quick word of caution. That you be x cubed plus 3x. Don't let it be x cubed plus 3x to the fourth power. Then you'd have to do the chain rule and it gets much messier. I'm going to end up integrating u to the fourth. That's no big deal. That's easy. Okay. It's an indefinite integral. That means your answer is blah, blah, blah plus c. One third u to the fifth over five plus c. Final answer one fifteenth change u back x cubed plus 3x to the fifth power plus c. And if you want to double check that, take the derivative of this. See if you get this thing back. Okay. <clears throat> All right, jumping back to 5.459b, some of you were still kind of stuck on what to do there. So <clears throat> I'll give you the highlights. Okay, so there was a velocity function, 3t minus 5, t going from 0 to 3. Part of the question asked for the distance and the displacement. Okay, so I had this picture, 0 comma negative 5. How did I get that? Plug in 0. 3 comma 4, how do I get that? Plug in 3. They said go from 0 to 3. So there's 0, there's 3. I need to know where it touches the x-axis. So set this to equal to 0. A little bit of algebra, t is 5 thirds. So I find this area and this area. So the distance, the total distance is the sum of the areas. Okay. The displacement will be that minus that. Okay. The areas are 1 half base times height. So one half, five times five thirds. That's this one here, right? Base, five thirds, height five, one half of five times five thirds. How about this one right here? 
one half of four times four thirds. The distance from five thirds to three is four thirds. You just subtract three minus five thirds is four thirds. Okay, so this comes out to be 25 over six plus 16 over six. Grand total is 41 over six. Uh, and the, it's a distance, so that would be meters. That's a total distance. Okay, for part A, the displacement, just count this as a negative. So it'd be negative 25 over six plus 16 over six, and you go from there. Okay, then 5.517 was asked for. The original was like this. E to the U over one minus E to the U squared DU. The derivative of one minus E to the U is almost E to the U, except for a negative symbol. So that's how I should let be my U. Okay. Yeah, one other thing. Yeah, I said U. The problem starts off with U. So I can't do a U substitution. Okay, so I did a V substitution. Okay, so technically you can't use U. U was already used up. <clears throat> so V substitution. V equals one minus E to the U. DV is negative E to the U DU. The original had E to the U DU. So multiply inside and outside by negative one. So now this top, negative one E to the U DU. Remember when I write DU like that off to the side, it's like it's in a numerator. That's DV. And one minus E to the U is V squared with a negative outside. Okay. And V squared on the bottom means V to the negative two on top. Okay, so negative V to the negative one over negative one plus C, the negatives cancel out. V to negative one means one over V, but what was V? One minus E to the U. So final answer, one over one minus E to the U plus a constant. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, there's a question in the chat. It really isn't for today, unfortunately, so I don't think I'll get to it. Um, so I'm just picking my own. So whoever asks, you can ask on Wednesday, frankly, if I get to it. Okay, 53, I'm gonna show you something a little bit different. I may have already done this one, but I'll teach this to you also. Now you can do a U substitution on this. Okay, you could say U equals that and so on, but I'll try to show you the idea of doing the chain rule in reverse, <clears throat> trying to integrate cosine of pi over 2t. So you can do u equals pi over 2t, blah, 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 blah. But instead, <clears throat> let's ask the question, what's the derivative of cosine pi over 2t? Be negative sine pi over 2t times pi over 2 by the chain rule. So I multiply it by pi over 2. Therefore, what happens when I integrate? I don't multiply by pi over two, I divide by pi over two, which means multiply by two over pi. Okay, so a quick way to integrate would be, say, what's the integral of cosine, sine? So sine of pi over two t times the reciprocal of pi over two, two over pi. Okay, and you can do that when, by the chain rule, you have to multiply by constant. You can't do that with a variable expression, but with a constant, you're allowed to do that. Okay, and double check. What's the derivative of this? Two over pi cosine pi over two t times pi over two. Well, if we multiply by pi over two, that knocks out the two over pi and you get it, perfect. Okay. So U substitution is fine, but I was trying to show you this technique that might be useful, especially when you get to calc two, that you can just say, oh, if I differentiate, multiply by pi over two. So when I integrate, multiply by two over pi. Okay, that's all. So factor out the two over pi, Plug in one, I got the sine of pi over two, which is one. And then plug in zero, so you get zero. So the answer is just two over pi. Okay, quickly, uh, 59, I think I already did this. So I'm gonna go through this rather rapidly. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let, the derivative of x to the negative one is x to the negative two, okay? So u equals one over x, which is x to the negative one. du is negative x to the negative two, which is negative one over x squared dx, okay? This is a definite integral. So I will change the limits. When x is one, plug in, u equals one. x equals two, 
u equals a half, okay? You can't change the order. The bottom has to stay the bottom, the top has to stay the top, even though it switches where the bigger number is on the bottom and the smaller number is on the top. That's the way it has to be. So negative integral from one to a half, e to the u du, okay? But that's okay. Just take the negative, apply it to this, switch them around, right? That's one of the properties of integrals. The integral from A to B is the opposite of the integral from B to A. And now it's perfect. No negative, smaller number, bigger number, e to the u. Okay, so e to the u from one half to one, e to the one minus e to the half, e minus radical e. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's see. 5.317, okay, find the derivative. So the thing about this one is it's backwards. Constant variable, it's supposed to be variable to constant. So we know flip it, make that a negative. So negative integral from pi over four to radical x, which of course is x to the half, okay? So the derivative is, it doesn't matter what this number is, as long as it's any number, okay? Put radical x here, radical x here. So negative, radical x tangent radical x times the derivative of radical x, which is x to the half. So one half x to the negative half. So clean up the algebra. I got a negative radical x tan radical x. There's the one half, two there. Radical x on the bottom, that cancels these. So negative one half tangent square root of x. Okay, quickly about 39. <clears throat> Okay, so I think I already did this also, so I'm gonna fly through this. One over radical three to radical three. Eight over one plus x squared, think of it as eight times one over one plus x squared, which is your inverse tangent. Take the eight out, inverse tangent of x from one over radical three to radical three. So it's eight times inverse tangent of radical three minus inverse tangent of one over radical three. You can look back in the notes, Treat that as radical three over one, and then you divide top and bottom by two. Remember that trick? Okay, so this is pi over three, this is pi over six. Okay, here's the trick I showed you. If inverse tangent of radical three is theta, that means tangent of theta is radical three over one. Sine over cosine is tangent, divide by two. That means sine of theta is radical three over two, cosine of theta is a half. Okay, that sounds like 60 degrees to me. So that's pi over three. Do the same thing with this. So you have eight times pi over three minus pi over six. Okay, that comes out to be eight pi over six or four pi over three. Okay. And let's see, somebody asked a question about dropping an exam. <clears throat> okay, so let me get this quickly here. Okay, 700 points are possible on exams. Okay, 500 on exams, regular exams, and 300 for the final exam. So final exam is worth 300 points, okay? You're only taking one exam of which you get a score between one and 100 and pretend you get it three times, okay? So it goes like this, test one, test two, test three, test four, which you've already had, test five, okay? You will take a final exam, which in actuality, you're not really doing this, but it's graded as test six, test seven, and test eight, and your scores on all of these are the same, okay? So if you skip the final, zero, zero, zero. If you get 100 on a final, 100, 100, 100. If you get an 80 on a final, 80, 80, 80. So out of these eight scores, whichever is the lowest gets dropped. That's the way it works. So that's what we mean by you could drop part of the final exam. So if you say, I'm just gonna skip out on test five, I'm doing so well in all the others. That's okay, that's a little bit more pressure to do well on the final exam, that's all, okay? We can go over the mathematics of this, but it takes too long, but it is in your best interest to do all the exams. Even if you got a hundreds on all four exams, mathematically, it's better for you to take this exam and then there's less pressure to do well on the final exam. That's the way I constructed that, okay? So that's the way the final exam works. So after you have your five scores, you have six, seven, and eight, which will all be the same score. You're not really taking three tests. You're taking one final exam score of which you'll get a score between zero and 100. It puts down in the grade book three times. 
And then out of these eight scores, whichever is the lowest gets dropped. Okay, so hopefully that explains that. Okay, and I think that's as much as I was gonna do. I know some of you want, somebody wanted a question to be done that really wasn't for today. That was gonna be for next Wednesday. If I happen to get to it, fine, but if not, that's that. So any other quick questions? Otherwise I want you to have the rest of the time for the quiz and that's about it. Okay, so any other questions? Otherwise it's quiz time. All right, so get ready to have your uh, cameras or screenshots ready. Now, no, for me, I actually have to stop to share and then share again. So bear with me as I try to get this. Okay, you should be able to see the quiz right now. Three questions. Okay, should not be that bad. Be careful of whether it's a definite or indefinite integral. Number three, use a U substitution. Okay, so go ahead and get started. I'll set you up in your breakout rooms and persona will be in one room and you might jump to another. Most of the time I'll be in the main room and then that's about it and have a good weekend. Okay, so those of you who asked a question for me to do in class, sorry, that wasn't the purpose of today, nor Monday, nor Tuesday, unless I happen to get to it. Okay, so Monday I'll review the first and second exams. Tuesday, the third and fourth exams. Okay, so please get this in the next uh, 15 seconds or so, because I'm gonna make it disappear, then set up the breakout rooms for everybody. Okay, I will now assume that everybody has this. So I'm gonna close this and set up your breakout rooms. And I will stop the recording also. And, and anybody who joined late, please put your name in the chat before we get to that.